Improvements are coming for USD 394 as the bond issue passes in a landslide. And team time is being revamped. We talk to students and teachers about their thoughts. We have all this and much more on Channel 7 News. And I'm Dakota Morgan. Election day came and passed, and it was a good new and it was good news for those at USD 394 Central Office. Sarah has more on the newly passed bond issue. This past week, there has been voting over the Rose Hill School District bond. A bond is a local investment in schools that also raises the taxes of people that live in the school district. Mrs. Fox spoke with us and agreed, saying, "I like that the bond issue is improving the school." After the bond was passed, we spoke to some teachers who are residents of Rose Hill for their opinion on the bond. We first talked to Mr. Ryan Hill, an architectural teacher who had a positive outlook on things. Well, the bond issue passed, which is a good thing, um, because there was a lot of great elements within it. Uh, does it hit everything that we need? No. Uh, did I wish? Perhaps it could have. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of different elements to it. Uh, it didn't raise our taxes, but it didn't lower our taxes. Um, and perhaps I may even would have liked it to raise our taxes just a little bit more to be able to cover all the needs that this district does need. But um, that was a decision not ba made um, by me, but by higher ups. And, um, and that's the decision we went with. And, yeah. We then talked to Mrs. King, a former teacher who started here at the high school in 1980. I like the fact that it's trying to fix the parking issues at the elementary school. I like that they are building a couple of new classrooms. I like that they are resurfacing the um, parking lots and trying to make that more user friendly. I also asked these teachers if they believed there would be room for improvement in the bond's details. I felt like some of what we're doing does not impact education as closely as maybe it should. I think that there are things we need educationally in our buildings, like um, projectors that are in the ceiling rather than down on stands. School needs, uh, it, hit, it hit some important parts in the middle school, it hit some important parts in the elementary, um, but it didn't quite meet the needs for some of the high school. And a quote from Mrs. Vicki Hull something for all of the buildings so it wasn't just one project it's many. Sarah Bailey, Channel 7 News. Recently a survey was sent around to parents, students, and staff members of the Rose Hill School District in hopes of using it towards individual school improvement. With more of the vision on the survey as well as thoughts on the effectiveness, here's AJ Taylor. On Friday, November 4th, the students at Rose Hill took a survey on their teachers. We talked to a few of the students and teachers about their thoughts on the survey. Principal Haydock told us that the survey was called a needs assessment and helped give them feedback. Part of the uh, state's accreditation process um, needs uh, school districts to do a needs assessment. And part of that needs assessment is getting feedback from uh, students, staff, and parents. So all the constituents in the in the district, and once you get that uh, once you get that data, then you can start uh, uh, making that part of your goal process to to uh, remain accredited through the state. Uh, Isabel told us that he liked the questions and thought it will help improve our school. I think it was a good survey to take. Like as far as the questions, I feel like there are valid questions to improving our education system. Uh, so yeah, I think it was a good survey to take. AJ Taylor, Channel 7 News. Coming up next are changes coming for team time. We take a deeper look at this often criticized program. And later, Dakota sits down with Mayor of Steve Huckabee. Stay with us.
Welcome back. One of the most highly scrutinized programs at Rose Hill High School is Team Time. But changes are on the way. Are they good or bad? Ace and Robert has the story. One of the most polarizing aspects of the student life at Rose Hill High is Team Time, the career choosing program that was introduced to the high school last year. Recently, discussions have occurred to make Team Time a weekly activity. We asked Roger Foltz about Team Time and why it might be every week. Uh, team Time right now is um, last year's. The state may had us do a like a, a kind of a trial run. Um, state of Kansas says you have to have some type of program where you're doing career and pathway training, which is what basic career cruising is, and also uh, like the uh, Lions Quest is more the social emotional piece. And so the state of Kansas says basically you need to have so much time in a year. So what's happening is what you're seeing is things are starting to develop. We'll probably have possibility, yes, it hasn't been decided that we may have a team time yet every once a week, and you have Lions Quest one week, and we're cruising the next week. With all the different interruptions, you're really only looking at probably 10 to 11 times of days for Lions Quest, and 10 or 11 days for team, uh, for team time for cruising piece, which is two separate pieces. So, uh, it probably won't be on Mondays, it may be. Uh, Fridays are probably better for kids who are in Butler County classes and academies because there's no classes. So that's another thought we have to look at. So Freshman Charlie Black gave us his opinion on the subject. I don't really like it because I feel like not a lot of people take it seriously. So that's kind of a waste of time. So the whole point of it is like career goals and stuff. And like if you don't take it seriously, it doesn't matter. Science teacher Leanne Yaus commented on the idea of team time being on Mondays. I don't like the idea of doing it on Mondays because that doesn't give any time to plan. It's a long time from the Wednesday before when we would have a teacher's meeting to discuss it to the very next Monday. Um, and also the fact that you know, Monday is a day to get started for the week in classes. Uh, and I like to get a good start of, okay, we're doing this and then we're doing this. And to have some kind of pattern, I think that uh, kids are not necessarily completely with it on Monday and maybe some teachers too. Uh, I know some Mondays are a little harder than others. Uh, I also think it gives a, a, a feeling of, uh, hey, sh the classes are short, because whenever we have a shorter class, it makes the rest of the day more complicated. And if they uh, don't change the schedule so that we end up rearranging the schedule with the fifth hour before lunch, that makes more chaos, and we definitely don't need that chaos on a Monday morning. Sophomore Emma Rogers expressed her concerns on how some high school students don't take team time seriously. I just don't like team time. I don't do anything in my team time class, and I don't know. Yeah, I can see like how like the school wants it to be good, and like they want to help you lead you on your path towards life and everything, but I don't really think anyone likes it. Aislinn Robert, Channel 7 News. Since the completion of the story, it has been determined that team time will start on December 8th and take place every Friday. Coming up next, Dakota talks to the newly elected mayor, Steve Huckabee. And later, in sports, we sit down to preview the girls' basketball season with head coach Greg Welch. Steve Huckabee. Thank you for your time, sir. My pleasure. Glad to be here. And we're going to be talking about his candidacy for mayor. So first of all, I'd like to know, um, why do you think the people of Rose Hill wanted you as their mayor? Well, I had several, uh, I've been pretty active with the City Hall over the last several months, and I had several people approach me and uh, voiced their concern about uh, uh, bringing the people's voice back into City Hall. and. And basically uh, getting a new mayor on this year's election so I, uh, uh, I was a little reluctant at first but uh, as we uh, moved into the scene a little bit further well it was uh, it, uh, sound like the right thing to do all right and for those who don't know what were some of your uh, major mayoral platforms well I run my platform basically on uh, uh, 
uh, respect and courtesy back to the citizens, uh, participation, bringing transparency back into Rose Hill, um, back into City Hall. We need uh, we need to let the people be uh, their voice be heard better in City Hall. You know they need to have more participation, be aware of what's going on. All right. So, um, had you had any involvement with um, with uh, the Rose Hill political system prior to uh, your candidacy as mayor? Uh, I've never been on the council. I've never been a mayor. I've never ran for any city offices. Um, but I, uh, I've been real active, I should say is a better word, active in the uh, city hall for the last uh, several months. Uh, I've, I've known all the... Uh, City Council people that are on there have discussed certain issues with them. Uh, just been very active in, in the city. All right. So, um, what drove you to running for mayor? Like, uh, why why did you uh, want to, or why were you uh, made to run for mayor? Well, again, the reason I ran for mayor, or uh, even started this whole process, was to uh, uh, to be a uh, citizens mayor. I wanted to be a mayor that. Uh, allowed the citizens uh, more voice in City Hall. I want to allow them to speak up. I want to allow them to participate. I think uh, an active uh, uh, city, uh, active people in the city makes a better uh, overall enjoyment of the city. It, it keeps everybody involved. Are there any last thoughts or comments you want to make, uh, say to the people of Rosa? Well, I'd like to say that uh, currently we're in a transition period between now and January 8th. Um, we're uh, actually just going to be learning. Um, I'm a, I have a meeting with the uh, city leaders here uh, this week, and we're going to uh, discuss the issues. Our first and foremost uh, priority right now is, is to replace our city administrator, which has taken a job in Abilene, and he'll be leaving uh, in the next few days. And we've got to start with the uh, League of the Municipalities in Topeka. Uh, that's where I think we have to start and find out what kind of help they can give us on finding a new administrator. And uh, currently, right now, though, we're going to put uh, Kelly Mendoza in as the uh, interim administrator until we uh, start our interviews and so forth. Pleasure meeting you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you for your much. time. My pleasure. Up next is Charlie Conroy with the weather. Welcome back, I'm Charlie Conroy and here is your Channel 7 weather. It's going to be cloudy plus windy today across south central Kansas as winds will reach 19 miles per hour. The lows for today will be close to the 40s and highs might be in the 60 range. For the weekend weather, we will be cooling down with only a high of 50 and low of 30. This applies to both Saturday and Sunday. On Saturday, the winds will be blowing strong with 25 mile per hour winds. Sunday will only have winds of 13 miles per hour and the sun will come out from the clouds. Up next we have Kobe Campbell who sits down with the girls head basketball coach Greg Welch.
Welcome back. The Rose Hill girls basketball team went 19-3 last season while winning a league title. Special correspondent Kobe Campbell recently sat down with head coach Greg Welch and found out his thoughts and hopes about the upcoming season. Thanks, Skyler. I'm sitting with girls rocket basketball coach Greg Welch. Thanks for your time, coach. Your program is coming off a 19-win season. What do you feel has to happen to get back to that point? So for us to have another successful season, we need to, uh, you got to put the work in. You know, success has a price. There's no shortcuts. So for us, to, you know, whether it's 10 wins, 19 wins, 15 wins, we got to put the work in, plan something. We got a lot of kids coming back. You know, we need to, um, you know, you got to, like I said, there's no shortcut. So what would qualify as a successful season for you? You know, we have to try not to put a, a number on anything or set a goal as a certain number or a certain championship or whatever it might be. Each team's different. Uh, we just tell our kids we want to be the best team you can be. That might be five wins, ten wins, twenty wins. You know, if you set a goal, say we're going to be a league champion, and once you meet that goal, then, you know, the year's not over. So we, you know, we try not to put a limit on any of our goals. We try not to put a number. We just try to say that we want to be the best team we can be. You lose five starters this year, but have players that played varsity minutes last year. Who do you expect to step up and be some of your top players this year? It's hard to say who will be our top players. You know, we have, I think, two girls coming back who received all the league. I mentioned last year with Sydney Adler and Emily Adler. We have six players coming back who received a varsity letter. So we do have some experience coming back, and I think the good thing about our team as far as a top player would be um, it could be anybody on any night. I think we're going to be very well balanced. It's going to be a hard scout for them to play against us because uh, it wouldn't surprise me if we had a different leading score you know, every other night. You know, it's not going to be one kid. That we're going to run plays for one kid to get 20 points this night or that night. I think it's going to be real balanced and spread out. Do you anticipate changing up your philosophy to fit the team this year? I think we'll have to change a few things. You know, the philosophy is one of those things where the X's and O's isn't really part of the philosophy, but I might play a little bit faster. A little more aggressive defensively because we're going to be smaller. I might force a few more turnovers. You know, last year we tried to play fast at times, and uh, but we had to slow it down because for our, our post players sometimes we wanted to make sure to get them involved. But this year I'm not sure we'll have a true post player, so we have to speed the game up even more. Uh, try to play as much full court basketball as possible. And finally, you're in your third year as a head coach. How would you assess the program and its progress? I'd say so far uh, I think we're doing some good things, but we can always improve. One uh, exciting thing I think about coaching, you know, high school basketball, especially, is each year is different. You know, this year, this year's group is going to be a different story than last year's group. And so our, our progress is hard to say because one year is so much different than the next year. But I think uh, I've enjoyed being here at Rose Hill and hopefully be here for a while. And uh, we've done some good things, but uh, there's still a few uh, goals and things we'd like to meet that we haven't accomplished yet. Thanks for your time, Coach, and best of luck on the season. Back to you, Skyler. Here are the finishing touches on your Rocket Fall Sports before we kick off coverage of Winter Sports next show. Here are all league selections for volleyball and soccer. All league volleyball selections were Gracie Vandrell, Emily Witt, Daniel Yardley on for the first team, and Brecken Myers on second team. Melissa Segovia was also named Coach of the Year. Vandrell also won 4A Player of the Year. For soccer selections, Channel 7's own Laith Cobb, Caden Dinkle, and Tristan Spies were first team, with Tanner Williams and Peyton Austin being chosen second team. Football selections will be released at our next show on December 1st. For our next show, we will begin coverage on your Rocket Winter Sports, including a sit-down with boys basketball coach Josh Shirley, so stay tuned for that. Sarah Dakota, back to you. That is all the time we have today. I'm Sarah Bailey. And I'm Dakota Morgan. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time on Channel 7 News.